Hi guys, Dr. Gretchen here, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist at The Missing Link. It is getting hot here. It's summertime and I thought this would be the perfect time to talk to you about heat intolerance. The first thing that you should know about heat intolerance is that it is caused by anything anything at all that causes your core temperature to rise by at least half of a degree. I'm going to let that sink in for a little bit. Half of a degree, which is not much at all. And a lot of people think that heat intolerance is caused from the outdoor temperature, the temperature it is outside. And that is true. That's one thing that can cause heat intolerance. But there's so many things. And when you have heat intolerance, one or multiple symptoms can occur. The symptoms that you will likely feel due to heat intolerance are symptoms that you will have already felt. It will never be a brand new symptom. That might be a flare or a pseudo flare. So what you're looking for is a symptom that you will have already experienced. And the first thing you should ask yourself when you're experiencing this symptom is, is there the possibility that my core temperature could have risen by at least half of a degree? And if the answer is yes, I'm going to give you some strategies that you can do to cool yourself down. But before we even get there, it's really important to understand all of the other things that could potentially be causing your symptoms to occur from heat intolerance. The first is the obvious, the temperature outside or the humidity outside. But one thing I want to point out here, and this is super common, is that you could be inside in air conditioning, feeling nice and cool, but if it's a hot temperature outside, especially if it's humid, the barometric pressure is still high and that can still affect you. I can't tell you how many clients I've treated that will feel heat intolerant symptoms even though they are indoors in air conditioning. So don't be fooled. Even if you're inside, the outdoor temperature can still affect you. Other things that can cause heat intolerance are things like a hot shower or even a lukewarm shower, depending on how your body tolerates heat. Also, exercise is something that can cause heat intolerance. Feeling really stressed and anxious and overwhelmed can cause your core temperature to rise. For some people, even drinking a hot beverage can cause heat intolerance. And again, the reason this is happening is because all of those things that I just mentioned caused your core temperature to rise by at least half of a degree. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. Let's say you are in a situation where you are feeling one of your symptoms increase. Maybe it's weakness or fatigue or sensory changes or vision changes. The first thing that you should ask yourself is, is there the possibility that I could be overheating right now, even if you don't feel hot. And if your answer is yes, maybe you're drinking a hot beverage, or maybe you just got out of the shower, or you're exercising, or it is hot outside. If your answer is yes, then you're going to want to implement some cooling strategies. And I have four that I think you're really going to like. My favorite cooling tip of all time is to sip ice cold water, not just room temperature water, but ice cold water. This is important because ingesting cold water into your body directly relates to cooling your core temperature because you're getting something cold inside of your body and it's something super simple. So have ice cold water nearby at all times and sip that periodically. Tip number two is going to be really important if you feel like your core temperature is rising due to stress or anxiety or feeling overwhelmed. And the best thing that you can do for this is first and foremost, cool your core temperature down, but also implement some type of stress reduction. Now this looks different for every person. One of my missing link members loves coloring in a coloring book. This is something that relaxes her, and is able to calm her down mentally and physically. But there are other things that you can do as well. You can count your breaths. Take deep breaths in and deep breaths out and count them as you're breathing. Maybe you attempt to take 10 big, deep and slow breaths. Or maybe you follow a guided meditation. There are lots of free apps that will give you free meditations. Some of them are guided where they'll tell you a story and others are not guided, but they'll play nice calming music in the background. 
find something that works for you to release your stress and anxieties. Now, of course, it's probably not going to go away all of the way, but that's okay. We just need to release it and reduce it at least a little bit. My third tip for keeping yourself cool is to use cooling products. And there are so many cooling products available, especially online. There's a lot of cooling vests that wrap around your core and come over your shoulders. Some of them you wear underneath a shirt so you can't even see them. Others you can wear over your shirt, totally your personal preference. They also have cooling neck wraps. There's cooling necklaces cooling wristbands. They even have cooling clothing. You can find shirts that will wick away your sweat and keep you cool. They have the same thing, but for hats, there's so many different things. So if you look online for cooling products or cooling clothing, you will find a ton. But the thing to remember here, and this is really important, it might sound obvious, but you need to remember to freeze the products first. I have a lot of clients who purchase cooling products, but they forget to freeze them. So if they're not frozen, you can't use them. And the second piece of this is you have to remember to use them. So first, purchase them. Second, freeze them in advance. And third, remember to use them. And my fourth tip is to be proactive. So think about your day. If you know it's going to be hot outside, or if you know today is a day that you're going to take a shower and that's something that increases your core temperature, or maybe it's the holidays and you know you're going to be stressed, or you have anything, exercise, anything that's going to increase your core temperature, Think about that in the morning of, or ideally the day before, and plan for that. Because if you know you're going to be exercising, maybe you're going to physiotherapy, or maybe you're going to exercise at home, you can implement any of those three strategies that I've already mentioned. And better yet, when you're implementing these three strategies, I want you to think about doing them before, during, and after. For example, if you are exercising, you're going to want to sip ice cold water before you start your exercises, while you're exercising, and after you exercise. You shouldn't wait until your symptoms flare due to heat intolerance. Be proactive. Similarly, if you're going to use a cooling vest or a cooling neck wrap or wristbands while you're exercising, put them on before you exercise keep them on during, and keep them on afterwards. If taking a hot shower is something that makes your symptoms flare due to the temperature of the water, have an ice cold water bottle in the shower with you and periodically throughout your shower, sip that ice cold water. And then when you get out of the shower, keep sipping it. Lastly, if you're still watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are someone that does suffer from heat intolerance, but I just want to point out that cold intolerance is also a thing. So if you're watching this and you feel like, well, I have heat intolerance, or maybe you don't, but you also have cold intolerance, maybe your symptoms worsen when you're cold, then you can implement the same strategies, but in reverse. For example, have hot sips of water, have warming products on you, they have warming blankets. So you just wanna do the opposite. If you'd like to learn more from me, I am on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, where you'll find lots of different exercises. And you can also work with me through The Missing Link, my online MS wellness program. I hope you found these heat intolerant strategies helpful, and I hope you have a great summer.